Welcome back to Fight Week here in Abu Dhabi. It's UFC 288. We're extremely excited. Today is the day where the boys and girls hit the scales here on BT Sport. And for people watching this back home, a little bit of information for you. We get underway in around about 10 minutes when the boys and girls hit the scales. Charles Oliver has already been here 50 minutes. Point 8, to make. 8 a.m. local time, he was outside ready to rock and roll. Obviously, with the with what happened last time to him on the scales when he got that belt taken off him because of the weight situation, we uh, we're now obviously expected him to be first on the scales this morning. Everybody realizes what a stack card this is, and everybody, literally everybody on the globe, wants to be a part of it. Now listen, we don't want anything to fall off with this main event because I like the matchup of Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makhachev. It is on paper, without any shadow of a doubt, one of the best fights that the UFC can make. However, there is another little narrative just lurking in the background. I'm not doubt he's going to come and join us on the show because the featherweight champion is in town. He's flown halfway across the world on the off chance that something crazy happens in, in the next two hours on these scales. I'm, of course, referring to Alexander Volkanovsky. He is the backup fighter for this fight. He's been speaking to his team this morning. He said, listen, Alex is ready to rock and roll. He's ready to step on them scales and make a £155 championship weight. He'll be having one eye on this. Now, if it isn't to materialise, we kind of know where he's going to be going in 2023 but again it just creates that interesting narrative because there's no chance that this fight goes ahead if if one of these guys doesn't hit 155 because no. there's a guy waiting of course this is not like a usual situation where they might have some time to make weight if one of these guys doesn't make weight then Volkanovski absolutely will be getting on those scales making weight and we've got ourselves a rearranged main event but as you've just pointed out Adam he is the number one pound for pound fighter on the planet that's how good this sport is. The number one fighter, pound for pound, on his 10-year anniversary as well, brave man. Anniversary of wedding you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, wedding, sorry, yeah, yeah. Has decided to fly to the other side of the world just in case he gets an opportunity to win a second belt in a second weight division and define his own legacy. If that's not a true fighter, a true champion, I don't know what is. And, again, speaking of how good the sport is, if something mad happens with that main event and one of them doesn't make weight and they fall out, Either fighter against Alexander Volkanovsky of course. is still an elite level main event for the vacant lightweight title. Yeah, because Volkanovsky has proved himself to be the best featherweight on the planet. Mm. You know, his performances against Max Holloway were just absolutely outstanding. And if anybody could, right now, if any champion in any weight division of the UFC looks capable of moving up to the next weight division and, and being a real contender, it's of course Alexander Volkanovsky. So yeah, it would be unusual if we got Volk versus Islam, bearing in mind the stature where Charles is in the sport. Mm. Of course, number one versus number two, pound for pound in any weight division, sign me up for that. But the beauty of Volk being here, even if he doesn't get the opportunity this morning, He's basically drawn a line in the sand to say, I'm next. Yeah. I was willing to go to Abu Dhabi just to be back up. So regardless of who wins here this weekend, as long as we get a clear winner, Alexander Volkanovsky's name, fight, fight that guy in 2023. Yeah, sounds like we've just lost a fight there, the featherweight fight from the prelims. Tupigot versus Lucas Almeida is off an issue with one of those fighters in making weight. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on, but here we go. Former undisputed UFC lightweight champion Charles. Get ready for the noise. Yeah, as expected. No mistakes this time around. Absolutely making a point. Look at the energy as well, man. He Our ran onto stage, ran off stage. Four Job ranks. done. UFC lightweight contender getting his first title shot at UFC here tomorrow. Here we Here's go. Islam Makachev. Islam Makachev about to hit the scales. Now, this is big because obviously Charles Oliveira has weighed in. Let's He's see what this energy is like. Islam's weighed in. So Charles has weighed in. He's on point, so therefore he's in this title fight. This is massive for Islam. He has to hit 155. There's no reason to think that he's not going to hit 155, but this is big. This is going to determine whether it's Oliveira Makachev in the title fight. There you go. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Is in, the, in the buffy. Listen, he'll, he'll weigh in to make sure he gets paid for, uh, for his troubles. Uh, but the lightweight title fight, 
Uh, the vacant lightweight title fight will be Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makhachev. Both guys weighing in half a pound under the allotted 155. Here's Peter Young. He's been very relaxed throughout the course of the week as well. Caught him a couple of times around the pool. Yeah. He's having a whale of a time. He's got his wife and his, his kids in town as well. Nice and relaxed. But, it's a, you know, it's a big moment for him, you know. He's taking on... A lot of pressure on, on him. He's the yeah, defender. He's taking on uh, Sean O'Malley. He's probably... He's probably the biggest favourite on this main card. I don't believe he should be. I think it is a bit closer than that. But there's a lot of pressure when you're the number one ranked guy, especially mm. when you're taking on number 10 right, exactly. ranked guy, because the expectation the is you're just going to absolutely run through. UFC welterweight contender competing in the future three months tomorrow night. Philadelphia, Sean Brady. Sean Brady, this guy can fight, my goodness, so much talent, 15 and 0 record, 7 finishes, but a real step up in class for him this weekend, taking on Bilal Muhammad, the number mm. 5 ranked uh, welterweight in the world, massive opportunity for Sean Brady, but Bilal's a specialist. Interesting to see him at the press conference yesterday. You could just see pounds. with the home crowd being obviously Sean all in favour of uh, Bilal Muhammad. He he was just getting slightly more pumped and pumped as the yep. questions were coming his way. He's going to be absolutely charged. And like uh, John Anik said a moment or two ago, that is the featured right, prelim. That'll be the last fight on the prelims for you on BT Sport 3 tomorrow evening. King, the undisputed UFC featherweight champion weighing in. It is. As a backup for the lightweight championship main event, Alexander Volkanovsky. Go on there, Volk. He wants it. This is a statement. Again, the 145 pound champion coming to make 155. Just to let the world know, regardless of what happens Saturday night, I am next, everybody. I want the two belt opportunity coming my way. <laughs> Easy. 155, the official way for Alexander Volkanovsky. Professional as ever. Did you expect anything less from him? Not at all. He's no. just the coolest guy in the UFC, this fella. The, the funny thing is, he's 155. The other two weighed 155. Even took the extra point five just because he could. Right. Sean O'Malley. Peter Yang came through a moment or two ago, weighing in at 136. Sean O'Malley, shades on. Bright red hair. Let's see where he's at. Biggest fight of his career so far in the UFC. He's confident. He's left his shades on. 135 and a half, the official weight for Sean O'Malley. He's so big, he's so long for this weight division, but he carries the weight really well, and so far, he's able to fight long, he's able to use that length to keep his opponents at range. Is there any point uh, over the last 24 hours where you received information that both guys were going to make weight? Did that happen at all, or did that only happen when you came down this morning? You know, when, well, did, you, when did you finally think, you know what, this is not going to happen? Well, we uh, without giving too much away... Uh, we got asked if we were still on back in We got asked uh, pretty late last night, uh, how's Alex doing? Uh, so obviously someone was uh, struggling, struggling, struggling a, bit. a little bit. But, um, but I mean, yeah, well, I was asleep when that happened. I just heard about that this morning, but all good. But from a realistic point of view now, as we said in our interview throughout the course of the week, you flew out here with a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, right, to exactly become that two weight world champion. It's not going to materialise Saturday you night. But well, you've led the market down. We now know what is next for you exactly. and the direction that you're going in. Well, that's it, mate. It was uh, obviously it was a commitment. Like, don't get me wrong, I worked hard to be ready just in case. But I mean, all that's worth it just because it's locked me in as the next guy. So uh, that's just the type of guy I am. I remember, like, I'll take all, you know, there probably was a risk, right? It's not like I had the, the best camp. Um, Wait, you've had to prepare for two fighters. Yeah, exactly two, two right. different styles, exactly really. Right. But I mean, like you know, we did, we put the work in anyway. But it's good to know that uh, you know the the big bosses agree that you know that I'm next. So that's good. Absolutely, the fight itself. Now that we know it's happening, <clears throat> which way are you swaying? Are you going Charles or are you going Islam? Well, I mean, uh, obviously uh, anyone uh, can uh, anyone can win, but if I had to lean towards someone, I think uh, Islam uh, might might be able to control control it, and then. If it is a finish, maybe later, but Charles can finish it anywhere in the five, five, five rounds. So it's a very interesting fight. I can't wait to see what's happening, but if I had to lean towards someone, maybe he's done. And are you going to be uh, welcoming the victor to Perth? Oh, oh, is, is that what we're going to be doing? Well, well they both uh, reckon they're, they're happy to do it, so let's, let's go. That'll be uh, the perfect uh, fight for me to do back home as well. As long as it's for a belt, I'm happy. You know, it's if it was me defending or me fighting for the lightweight. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a, that'll be unreal, so we'll see what happens. Getting on those scales this morning, is that the hard fight done? Is it the fun stuff now? Getting inside the octagon, is that the stuff you enjoy? Making weights the hard part? As you can see, smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when he wasn't smiling yesterday. <laughs> First time I've seen him without a smile. Yeah. Now look. When, when I'm smiling, I'm the most dangerous fighter on the planet, so Saturday night I'll be like, 
dangerous guy. Good man. Uh, now in my head, I can go three rounds, do whatever I want, like spin kicks, everything I can do. I know I have gas tank for three rounds. Now I'm gonna do everything in this cage and I just want to beat this guy. Did you just say, so? he said some spin kicks? Uh, though, he, did he did say he, spin kicks, I was just gonna pick him up on them. Yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> Listen, with your level of grappling, why not? You know, that's the whole why thing. Why not? What the, what's he gonna do? Gonna it, catch my leg? Exactly. You're gonna play with my leg. There you go, let's go, let's yeah. play. Yeah. Yeah. They most certainly are, mate. They will. There you go. You know they Let will. me take that. Go on, you go and get yourself rehydrated, my friend. Thank you very much for your time. Mohamed Mokai, hitting the scales a little earlier on. Right on the money, Aljamain Sterling, 135, I can see. Nice and jacked, that he is. You know, even when you're a champion, even when you're sort of like Aljo, who's so established in the sport now, of course, been there, done it many times, wore the t shirt the established, accepted, and, you know, beloved champion. Now, you can even see the expression on his face then, just making wait, even for the guys at this level. We've both conceded that Robert Whitaker is the best of the rest, there's no doubt about that. Yes. And he is taking on. Paolo Costa. Paolo Costa. Jeez. Wow. What happened to the Chimaev fight? It looking like we were going to get Chimaev versus Paolo Costa. They were having a little back and forwards on social media. Chimaev, of course, missed welterweight last time out. It seemed like the UFC were going to usher him up to middleweight. So this kind of blindsided us overnight because, of course, Whitaker coming in. Yes. Yeah. And it makes sense, of course. Well, it's perfect. It's a isn't huge it? fight. So it's a huge fight. Huge fight. Now, we've just uh, obviously been commenting that you are the most relaxed, chilled, smiliest person throughout the course of fight week. When does the switch go, mate? When, when is it? Is it when you hear the music? Is it when the cage door shuts? When does it happen? The whole, I never understood the whole switch thing. It's always on. That's what makes me so relaxed. It's easy to kill. It's never been hard. Everything else has been hard in my life. TJ Dillashaw couple of members of Aljo's team just to my right hand side as well as TJ makes his way to the scale yeah. one of Ludwig. which being Mira Devashvili Dwayne Ludwig TJ's head coach standing right next to him as well they seem pretty confident no issues here easy 135 pounds the official weight for it's been a crazy couple Dillashaw. of years for TJ Dillashaw obviously he served the suspension out of the sport for a couple of years he's come back in as the heel he has that fight last time out against Corey Sandhagen he comes through it but there's controversy behind it a lot of people believe that Sandhagen actually won that fight and should you know have got a, a, a title opportunity yeah 100% it's one of those things just part of the journey this song is going to end soon for me one day sooner than later I think uh 33 now, man, so there's only so many times I could keep doing this down on 135, so it's just taking it all in and documenting everything, having fun, enjoying the moments. Um, the song stops eventually, so just embrace it. That's all you can do. I'm looking at Piotr Jan today, even our last two fights, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, the guy looks like he cuts no weight. He fights at an optimal performance. I'm telling you, man, there's, there's these training camps I'm doing. I'm on fire, and I do seem to slow down just a little bit in the later rounds, and that's normal. You should slow down in a high-level fight, you know, stress, anxiety a little bit, um, the crowd, you know, so there's a little bit of that factor to it, but uh, maybe it has something to do with how much weight I'm cutting the final day before stepping on the scale, you know. I'm pretty lean. Yeah. Um, I already walk around with a super low body fat percentage, so to get down to 135 is not easy, but I do it, and I show up, I perform, and I get the job done, so I can't really complain. I'm winning, and uh, we'll see. Right now, so far, so good. I take it one fight at a time, not looking ahead. Um, it's just something to kick down the, down the road a little bit later to, to really sit down and think about, maybe get some analysis done with the PI team. And maybe my best days are still ahead of me. And maybe it'll be a little bit more fun not having to cut down like this. I don't hate the guy. I just, he signed a dotted line. So he's the guy who's got the target on his, on his back. And Absolutely. unfortunately, um, it's got to be like that until after. And then when it's all said and done, maybe, maybe we have a beer. Maybe. Last one from me. When you have a bit of chill time today, you may see on social media that me and my good friend here have made a, a rap record. All right, my friend. I know that you are coming into uh, the music industry. Is this right? I, I, am I led to believe that you're going to be uh, spitting some bars yourself? You got the talent. You can do exactly what I'm doing, except in a different landscape. So hopefully this song comes out, and uh, I, think, I think it's going to be fun, and it's going to be one of those things that's got, it's going to be maybe like a Roy Jones Jr., but a little bit better. Awesome. Awesome. A little bit better. If, if you need to sprinkle any cheese on it, mate, come yeah. and get the, the, cheese. The, 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 the Abu Daddies. We'll, 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 we'll get that going the for you, right? Abu Daddies. <laughs> Listen, man. master featuring the Abu Daddies. Yeah. Let's go. Thank like you, Al Jones. Listen, enjoy your Amazing. day, man. Go on, I'll take that off you. Go Thank and you. get rehydrated, buddy. Take care. Thank you, sir. Uh, the champ, Al Jermaine Sterling, coming to join us. Absolutely blowing us out for a rap uh, collaboration. He wasn't interested, was he? He wasn't having it at all. He only does 
serious music. Yeah, other than yeah. serious music. We'll come back to that conversation in a minute because something's just interesting there on the scales. Kaitlin Kachukagian, before he even hit in the scales, has already asked uh, for the cover. So therefore, she's going to be uh, tight, you would imagine, to this flyweight limit, taking on Manon Fioro, who came through earlier on. Manon Fioro weighed in, no problem from her point of view. But, as I said this morning, when I was uh, obviously helping Zubira Tukagov uh, make his way, Kelly Chukagin was uh, making her way downstairs as well. So therefore, yeah, she's obviously the number one contender in the division. She's never missed flyweight before, even though she's one of the taller scales in the weight class. I've never seen a struggle like this before. Here we go. She did fly into the Abu Dhabi late, though, remember, Adam? She was at the airport with us on Monday, flying in from Chicago. Just wonder whether that's affected her. Here we go. She's 127.5. She's missed. Five, the official weight for Caitlin Chukagin. There you go. So she's 1.5 over the 126 limit allowed for a non-championship fight. She Still got an hour and 15. Some time to go away and try and get rid of that extra pound and a half but the fact that she got on the scales already stripped down and failed to make weight makes me suggest that the next it's unlikely now she's going to be able to make weight mm. in the next hour and 15 minutes really disappointing as I say totally out of character she's never missed weight before my, 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 my thoughts on it are is that Islam Makachev has to be perfect yeah if he's perfect he can beat him yeah but Charles Oliveira can finish anywhere. He can finish you. You make one slight mistake, he can finish it. And that is the thing. Because he's got the experience, you kind of side towards him a touch. Yeah. But watching Islam throughout the course of the week, he's absolutely, I think he's absolutely been brilliant throughout the whole course of fight week and he, he's really grown into it. Yeah, listen, for me, of course, as you say, Charlie Olives has got the experience, so he's probably going to start the fight as the favourite and the favourite for a reason. I'm also a massive fanboy for what he's done in his career, turning his career around the way he has, the 10-11 fight win streak that Absolutely. he's on, the most submissions in the game, the most finishes in the game. Let's be honest, if, he, if he's not your favourite fighter in this sport, do you even MMA? Do you know what I mean? The, the guy is red hot. However, if you said to me, Habib's going to come back, make his return, and he's going to fight for the belt tomorrow... I ain't going against Habib. And all I keep hearing is, Islam is better than Habib. That's all I keep hearing from the team, from Habib himself, from everyone around him. Just because Islam hasn't fought anybody in the top five or beaten anybody at the upper echelons of this lightweight division doesn't mean he can't. Correct. And this week, I've been really won over by the fact that he's took it all in a stride. He looks like he belongs here. Yeah. He's going to have a massive fan base behind him on Saturday night. Make no mistake, this Abu Dhabi crowd are pro-Islam Makhachev. But Charles is used to that as well. Yeah. And I think regardless he gets off of on it, it, the beauty of it is, Charles could lose the first round. He could almost get stopped in the second. He might even nearly get choked in the third. But Charles Oliveira can pull off a knockout or a submission in the first minute or the 25th minute. And that means he's a live dog throughout. It's how Islam mm. manages the fight. And is he able, as you say, to be perfect for 25 minutes? That's a huge, huge ask in your first two obviously championship event main event so for that reason I still fancy Charles Oliveira but I'll tell you what it's going to be an absolute masterclass uh, thank you very yeah, much uh, for getting up nice and early this morning and watching those weigh-ins all good when it comes to the title fights only Caitlin Chugegi and missing out uh, at 127.5 we'll get you more information on our social media channels with that particular fight which is due to kick off that main card do not miss this UFC 280 the most stacked card of the year on BT Sport Box Office